Hi, this is Leonie from Spines and Splines. Today I'm going to do something I've wanted to do for a long time, which is to make an etching press using a pasta machine. For an extra challenge, I'm going to do it as part of the Modern Maker podcast Rock the Plywood Challenge and make it from one sheet of plywood. For this project, I'm using one sheet of 6.5mm plywood, which I had delivered to me cut into four parts. Basically the way an etching press works is it's two cylinders that have a piece of steel sandwich between them and you can roll that piece of steel backwards and forwards with things in between that get squished underneath the rollers. And essentially a pasta machine is the same thing. It's two little rollers with a hand crank and you would run your pasta dough through it to make it flat. So usually with a pasta machine you put your dough in the top and it comes out the bottom and that's a little bit difficult for printmaking. I've seen lots of videos on YouTube where people print that way and it just looks really awkward and it feels really awkward. So basically I want to mount the press up on its side within a structure so that the paper and plates run through the press horizontally. So what I've done is I've cut the plywood down to a bunch of different sizes that I'm then sort of sticking together to make thicker bits of plywood that will make two sides of the press and then I'll be able to slot some shelves into there and drill some parts out to mount the press. So what I'm doing basically is an additive process of woodworking rather than a subtractive process. And these bits of wax paper that I'm putting in between things as I dry them essentially just stop the glue from sticking to other bits and pieces that I don't want to stick to the surface. So here's my little pasta press that I bought on sale one day, hooray! And I'm going to remove the bottom of that, it's just screwed in and that will make it possible for me to mount the press horizontally so that paper can run through it. And now here I'm just using my shelves as a spacer so that I know where to put the little supports that I'm going to stick to the inside. So I'll be able to put glue in the bellies of these and then mount the shelves in between. Just a little tip if you are in a print shop, if you've got some small shelves of type that you can use, they make a great way to help stick stuff down. And now I'm making the little cover that's going to be the top. So I've got this sheet of perspex that I'm scoring with a blunt scalpel blade and I'm doing about 10 scores on each side in the same spot. And then with a bit of force I can just get the excess perspex off the edge and then file down the edges and sand them so that they're nice and smooth. And I'm painting my bit of plywood for the top white so that when I've got my ink on top I can see the colours easily. So I'm just butt joining these together and it's not the strongest holes. So I've countersunk some screws and filled the top with some filler and I'm also putting some brackets on the inside just for a bit of extra strength. And I've glued those down and then screwed them in.
So I've dry fit everything together. I've drilled out my hole where the crank's gonna go through the press and I'm putting in some screws to help hold up the press. Then I'm gonna put some contact adhesive on those to help hold the press in place. But before I do that, I'm gonna varnish everything just so that it's all good to go. Then melting the shells in is pretty easy, just glue and slot them in. And then, as I said, use the contact adhesive to mount the past machine in the press. And my battery ran out here so I don't have the whole gluing process in, it's just put a lot of glue on, put your extra shells in and then put some more glue on top of that essentially and let it dry. And that's it, that's the pasta press, hooray! And now we're going to see it in action. So I've got the inking bench, I'm getting everything out that I need to print. And I'm going to run through a couple of different plates. So I've got an etched copper plate, I've got an engraved copper plate, I have a cardboard dry point plate and a plastic dry point plate. And a couple of different types of ink to suit those particular printing methods. And this is how you print an etching. And with my little cardboard plate, I hadn't, uh, I'd stuck a piece down to the top of the cardboard and I hadn't left it long enough to dry, so that came off. So I just made the best of it essentially. So with the press I've mounted it in a way that I still have access to the adjustment knob on the side so that I can make it thicker or thinner depending on what I'm putting through. So the copper's obviously a lot thicker than the cardboard and the plastic. And I've also got a sheet of wool felt, which is what you would normally use on a regular etching press as well. I don't have a traditional bed in this press obviously, so I've got another piece of the plastic dry point material that I've put underneath the blanket just to help it run through more smoothly because it can be a bit difficult to get the press to grab onto the whole little sandwich of plate and blanket and everything together. So what you can see me doing here, if you've never done an etching before, is I've got a bunch of damp paper that I'm blotting dry with newsprint, and I'm putting my plate down onto that newsprint again, putting the paper on top of the plate, and then folding the newsprint over, and then sandwiching that in the felt to run it through the press and the pressure from the press pushes the ink from the plate into the damp paper and that's how you print an etching. So I've obviously I've got an etching press already, but the great thing about having a little press like this is I now have a portable etching press that I can take around places if I'm ever traveling. And that's it. That's my Modern Maker podcast, Rockler Plywood Challenge Project. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, share and comment if you like this. And stay tuned to Spines and Splines for more creative projects that you can do in your studio or workspace. Cheers. Bye.